So I, I always say this, I always enjoy to be in Trinidad Tobago. To, uh, it's always fun to be here and fun to meet people, uh, uh, friendly people of Trin Trinidad Tobago. I enjoy meeting them. So, uh, so now uh, this is the agenda of the uh, presentation. I will have an introduction. Uh, uh, this is mainly introduction. I cover uh, up that, and I will I will have some slides talking about BLAS, uh, 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 understanding BLAS. The, uh, then uh, we'll discuss BLAS testing, and I will show you some videos, test videos that uh, I have performed uh, for several years. And then, if we have time, uh, I think we, we will talk about blast retrofits, probably we will not have time. We <laughs> I only have 25 minutes then. The, uh, le uh, lastly, the question and discussion session. Now, I generally classified blasts uh, or explosions in two uh, detonations and deflagrations. I will not go in detail, but mainly detonation is the, the blast or explosion generated by TNT or high explosives uh, or M4 or grenade and that kind of uh, uh, explosives. And uh, generally, shockwave produced by detonations will have supersonic velocities. On the other hand, uh, deflagrations, these are the type of the explosions that we see uh, mainly in petrochemical facilities. 99% of the explosions in uh, petrochemical facilities or offshore platforms will be deflagrations. So deflagrations and def detonations are different. Uh, deflagrations mainly we call it is generated due to the vapor cloth. We call them vapor cloth explosions at the same time. Or m most of the va vapor cloth explosions are def deflagrations. In a petrochemical facility or, or, or in oil and gas facilities, uh, uh, the, the explosions happen because of the release of gas or uh, liquid, mainly gas. So you have, uh, for, for example, uh, we, we, we see uh, several presentations about LNG facilities or plants in Trinidad uh, uh, and etc. We saw the TMAS presentation they say call TMAS in every case in emergency. Uh, we call 911 in US, so I think after this presentation I will call TMAS. <laughs> uh, so uh, so for the uh, first we, ha we re have release of gas in, in this type of facilities from the vessels, tanks, pipes, and etc. Then that release of gas will form a, a, a gas cloud that will cover the facility or certain portion of the facility. And when that gas cloud finds an ignition point, like a, a spark from the engine or someone try to start the, his truck and run away because there is a cloud form, uh, then you, you will have a big explosion. So that is kind of simply a definition of the deflagration. So the, the difference in terms of structural engineering, we, we design st structures for detonations or, or deflagrations. So this is like a pressure time history, we call the pressure that load that applied on the building or any structure during an explosion event. So uh, when you have a terrorist attack, the explosion, you will see very high pressure in, in, in the first millisecond. Uh, in one millisecond, you will have a very high, uh, high blast pressure that will impact your building. On the other hand, when you have a deflagration type of explosion, you will have that highest blast pressure after five or ten milliseconds. So it doesn't make any difference for us. You know, you cannot ex escape anywhere in five min milliseconds anyway. Uh, but but for, for the buildings, it makes sense. Uh, this one, detonations, cause more damage on the buildings, the deflagration cause less damage compared to detonation because of the, this character. The interesting part of, of the explosion or blast load is uh, uh, blast pressure, pressure push the building in, then pull it out. 
So people think that just it just push in and cause damage. Some of the damage comes from actually pulling out or tension due to the explosion. So I will not go in detail the, the, the why it happens, but now I will jump to blast load estimation methods. So there are mainly two types of methods. Uh, I mean, uh, that uh, for all oil and gas facilities, one of these methods used uh, are used to calculate the blast loads so that they can design the, their building or uh, structure for blast. One of them is computational for dynamics method, which is very expensive but you visually model the, the blast wave or shock wave propagation. I will show you one example. And on the other hand, uh, a lot cheaper uh, methods that we call empirical method. There are two of them. Uh, the interesting part is people think this method, you, you know, computational fluid dynamics method, which is more expensive one, will give always better results. Uh, unfortunately, that is wrong. Uh, uh, and uh, some cases, the expensive method gives worse results. Uh, actually, very interestingly, uh, whichever method you use, you cannot estimate the blast load correctly. That's another thing in blast engineering. Uh, 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 this is actually, this slide is from a paper that I published from a journal. Uh, you, you see the, the comparison of the method here, uh, and there is almost 100% error or a difference between the results. Uh, so I always tell this for uh, a, a engineering that's very important, never believe software results. Uh, and you, you have to interpret the results well. Uh, in BLAS engineering, that is twice true. I mean, you, you never believe any results. You have to use experience uh, and your judgment to this design. So there are some uh, 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 parameters that has to be captured in blast design. So this is kind of the building. You can see the drawing. When blast approach this building, the, the, the wall facing the blast load or blast source will, will experience very high blast pressure or very high damage and blast loads due to the reflection that we called. I will show you a video, test video that I have performed years ago. Uh, and then the, 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 the back wall and the roof will experience low, lower, lower blast, blast pressure. But blast, as a result, is a dynamic event. You cannot uh, assume it's uh, just one load, or, uh, or you cannot assume the estimated damage using just pressure value that is uh, like a static load, like other uh, load cases, like uh, uh, conventional design, we can just have a lot uh, uh, a force or moment used and use it to design the buildings. In blast, time duration of the blast is very important. And I was, I forgot to mention, you know, uh, for a high explosive, if there is a terrorist attack, the duration of the blast is all around 16 milliseconds. So it is very short duration load applied to human and the, and the, and the building. For a, a, a deflagration or explosions that you see in oil and gas facilities, it is 150 milliseconds. And we call it very long duration. This is just 150 milliseconds. Uh, so uh, that is the difference uh, in, in terms of duration. Uh, and that duration is very important uh, on the blast design. So this is kind of a, a capacity curve that we use in blast engineering that gives you the, the, that we estimate the damage on the structure using this capacity curve. So uh, another dif difference uh, of blast engineering or blast assessment design from the seismic or uh, in other conventional design, we accept damage on for blast uh, when we do the blast, blast design. You have to accept damage on the building. You have to uh, assume that otherwise the, the, your design will not be feasible or we, we, will not be, uh, we, we, they, no one will do that design actually. Yeah, it will be very expensive. So uh, we, we, that's why we classify damage as low damage, medium damage, and high damage. Uh, and uh, actually, I will discuss that later on. 
And this is kind of a test video, actually, I don't know. Yes, I, I think you can see here uh, the, the shock wave uh, propagating towards the building. Uh, and then, then here, shock wave actually wrapping over the building uh, so after a certain time. Now, I mentioned this lo loading on the building, never trust the software, use your judgment. So there is a very thin line between conservatism and confidence in, 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 in the analysis. Uh, and that's very important. And the other thing is, we talk about the risk here, in several presenters mentioned the risk in oil and gas facilities or in other facilities. Uh, risk. Uh, some people think that they use maximum loads and so, so that they will never have an explosion or no, a, any event or they will n there will be no fatality if there is an explosion in their facility. This is not valid for, for uh, explosion or uh, fire engineering. There is always risk available in that facility. Whatever you do in your design, uh, Although you mentioned that your design is conservative, there is always a risk uh, that you may expose to a, a hazard, explosion hazard, fire hazard, and there is always a risk that your building will expose to a higher load than you, the design load that you have. This is a, a deep horizon uh, incident, a very good example of it. Uh, we generally, in Gulf of Mexico, you, you know, some presenters mentioned it, uh, in Gulf of Mexico, generally the, the, the offshore platforms are designed for two bars to four, four bar pressures. In Trinidad, uh, it, is, it is maybe, it is around that. Some, some facilities are actually a lot lower than that. But typical blast pressure for offshore platforms will be around two bar. Uh, and in Deep Horizon accident, the estimated blast pressure was uh, more than 10 bar. So nobody could estimate that blast pressure during the design stage. And nobody actually, even as if they can estimate, nobody could design this structure for 10 bar. Uh, so that is, that's what I am trying to say. You know, sometimes whatever you, you do, you will, you will be exposed, exposed to hazard. Your role is, as an engineer, the, the main role is, especially in oil and gas facilities, and in general, to reduce the risk as much as we can. Uh, sometimes I hear, I have been in this business for a long while, uh, I do consulting actually, not only for oil and gas facilities at the past, I did consulting for the militaries, the US military, Canadian and South African military. Uh, and then sometimes people's, uh, people think that, uh, you know, they do everything so there will not be a risk uh, and they will be fine, their design is perfect. That is not valid in this business. So, so we have to accept the, the, the risk, uh, but we need to know the level of the risk or the, uh, the, the, the level of the t risk that we are taking in our design and report it. That's the, that's the part of it. Uh, uh, important part of uh, engineering. And the Horizon uh, oil rig explosion, uh, 11 people killed. This was in 2010 and 16 people injured. Now, I mentioned about the acceptance criteria. I mentioned you that you accept risk or sorry damage in in designing uh, buildings for blast. So, for example, this is we generally accept medium damage, that which which means that you may lose your wall, uh, that may collapse or deflect significantly, uh, or damage significant, and you cannot repair it. Uh, after the blast, but the main idea is to protect the people inside of the building, and if you can do that, that is fine, that is acceptable in the in oil and gas industry. But uh, I mentioned you, I, I uh, do consulting uh, for especially explosions and sometimes terrorist attack or designing federal building for uh, Department of Defense or militaries. For example, military has different acceptance criteria. If 
When we work for the military, if the soldier lose his arm or leg, that is acceptable. So that is so the, the design criteria defined by uh, the uh, the people uh, or the business. So it is not same thing. You cannot have the same design in oil and gas industry, uh, the design that you have for the military. So this is kind of showing uh, the risk curve. So you can choose a load here and then you will know the frequency of that event, so you will know the risk that you are taking. Uh, so, see, this is frequency, this is blast load. So you, 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 can, you can choose your risk. You know here, if you do this type of study, some companies does that, and especially in offshore industry, everyone, everyone does that, do that do this type of study, you calculate your risk and you know what, what risk you are taking. Uh, so in off, onshore facilities, it is rarely uh, we see this type of assessment. So some companies use individual risk, calculate the risk and to give decisions according to that. Now I, I will talk about BP Texas City uh, accident that actually I did the in, uh, investigation uh, when that accident uh, happened, I did this, uh, the in accident investigation at that time. So, and some of the presenter mentioned about BP Texas City. Just it happened 2005, and 15 people killed, uh, 170 of them injured. At that time, actually, uh, you see this is uh, the the buildings. Actually, almost 40 of that 15 people were located. There, is, there were. The, uh, one, one of them here and the other is here. These were like wood trailers that we ignore at, the, at that time. Uh, we ignored and we didn't do any blast assessment, etc. The reason is they were temporary building. We were thinking that uh, constru uh, con the contractor will work and leave the site, uh, bring their wood trailer with them. Unfortunately, uh, like I mentioned, 14, actually 14 of that 15 people killed were in these two, two wood trailers. Uh, and they were, uh, you see this is uh, the site picture uh, after the explosion. As you see, totally collapsed those wood trailers. Okay, not good. <laughs> okay, more pictures from uh, f uh, f from BP Texas City incident, uh, and you will see these these structures again, wood trailers and other structures, even very far from the uh, explosion source, they they damage significantly, and uh, most of the injuries happened in these buildings. They, these were uh, some of them were almost 100 meter away from the the explosion source. Some of them 50 meter. Uh, some of them for 150 meter. And this is a, a picture showing the test results and more pictures from the uh, explosion source. So after that incident, we have uh, performed the assessment, API come out, I was part of this, that did kind of uh, map uh, something like that, you define the location of the building. Uh, according to this map, you define where to put to locate your building uh, and which type of building. So t I will show you testing video. Uh, this is moved to here quickly. So this is the testing, uh, testing I have performed years ago. This is the first test in the world that's performed for blast resistant uh, uh, metal buildings. After BP Texas, the, uh, there was a demand for blast resistant portable buildings. So I was one of the first designer of those buildings and I, I, I was the one who tested uh, this first in the world, uh, including uh, actually the car crash dummy that I located that inside of the building to, uh, uh, to understand the response of the uh, human as you see here. Uh, this is a this has correct stiffness of the uh, uh, neck and uh, knees and etc. That car crash dummy was used to, to in GM test. Uh, it took me one month to uh, con convince them to use that car crash dummy in in blast testing. Uh, so this is uh, and let's see if this video will work. Yeah, as you see, this is the test, uh, and you can see the shock wave propagating 
towards the building and uh, this hemispherical shape of the, the shock wave. Sorry. And this is uh, c c c the w you, you look uh, the building, uh, uh, the high speed camera looking at the building. Look here, you will see how the blast wave propagates and then hit the wall and reflect it. That, that f reflection caused at least double the blast load on the building. So this is a computational method. You see the simulation, computer simulation of the blast wave propagating towards the building, so to estimate the blast load before the test. And this is after the explosion. I forgot to mention, I use uh, uh, almost 550 kilograms of TNT in that, in that explosion, and uh, this is the dimension of the crater after the explosion. So this is the blast load pressure time histories. We recorded the pressure time histories on the building, almost 1.5 bar blast load on that building. And the building there has very insignificant damage after that blast load. So, and we record inside uh, the damage inside. This is, uh, we look, measure the structural damage. We remove the internal items. And we, uh, this is portable building, not attached to the ground. So we look at the sliding. Uh, because uh, there was a big discussion in, in the BLAST committee at that time, uh, or bl uh, BLAST engineers. Uh, some of them mentioned that this building will slide almost uh, one meter. I was telling them that it will slide uh, less than half inch, uh, or uh, yeah, so actually less than one inch. Uh, uh, you know, it is uh, 2.5 centimeter. Uh, so that's big difference, one meter versus 2.5 centimeter. So uh, after the test, we find out that it is uh, it it slides a, a, around two two centimeters. So uh, uh, I was right. <laughs> So this is after the test. Since we design inside of the building for blast, you don't see any significant damage on the uh, on on the the human or uh, uh, the car crash dummy, and in, even the inside of the uh, structure. Uh, so this is again pictures showing after test, uh, and I will show you one video. So this is, okay, if I turn on the volume, that will be good, but I don't know if I can figure out that. Okay, uh, what you will see is actually, this is two, T2 explosion in Florida. Uh, and uh, you can see, we talk about uh, in the morning non-structural members, not only structural members, but non-structural members to be considered in, in, uh, if, uh, in uh, during, if, Blast or fire and etc. So, this none of the buildings collapsed in this ex accident, but two people killed. Uh, mainly that non-structural items doesn't wasn't considered in the design. Uh, so, and the blast load on the building was almost one tenth of the test blast load that I showed you. It was very low blast load. So. More pictures uh, from real incident. This this the incidents in Texas. Uh, actually, these two, three of them in Texas. This is in Iowa. As you see, nothing happened, but the guy wasn't here, luckily. But the light fixtures just fell on his chair, uh, and uh, and inside of the building again, this uh, instance in Texas. And very interestingly, this building was a control room building. We, it was the only building that is called explosion-proof building. Uh, actually, it was the only building that has collapsed during the, that explosion, too. Uh, 
So that's very interesting. This main the reason is the designer didn't have a experience in BLAS and believe the numbers from the software or used conventional method to design. Now I will I will jump. The windows are very important. Let's see if I can uh, do it. Yeah, I will show you the the. This is window failure, the glass explosion event, and it, it, you see how Windows glass fails during the explosion event. Most of the hazards uh, in the in, in oil and gas industry or when the explosions happen, it comes from Windows, window glass. The reason is our structural engineers like like me, we 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 are we are we don't consider Windows as a as a structural uh, member. So. In any other design, we don't we don't do enough of windows to the load. So most of the time, I see that people ignore windows. And unfortunately, windows fails in, under very very small blast load, and it causes fatality or significant injury. Think about you are sitting or standing behind that window. Okay. <laughs> So, so this is a, another person's, uh, another company's test. Actually, very good pictures, uh, uh, the window failure and impact on the uh, on the human. So I will show you l l last video. Uh, actually, the fragment. Sometimes when explosion happen, fragments flights. Uh, or projectiles flights. Uh, uh, I have been several incidents, uh, incident site, and actually I was, uh, uh, I have been too many of them. So sometimes uh, when I ha I have visit, sometimes when I visit site, I see explosions happen or fire happens. So it, and it was uh, a sign for me that I am traveling too much or I am doing these too many uh, projects at once. So I, I decided not to travel too much after that. It happened a few times. Uh, uh, but uh, what I see is projectiles, uh, when uh, explosion happens, projectile flies. And uh, because of those projectiles, you may have fatality or your building may damage significantly. So these are the computer models that shows how projectile penetrates but uh, to, to the structural wall. But I will show you actually video, uh, the test video uh, of the, the, so this is the explosion. See, assume you are standing here. Just assume it. Uh, uh, you will not mainly injured or have uh, uh, or significantly injured due to the blast load, but the projectile flying the, uh, the, that you saw, the projectiles that flying or impacting you will cause uh, significant injuries or fatalities. So, um, so one ex in, in uh, this is a uh, real case uh, in Spain in, in an old event in 1978, 211 people were killed because of the real. Uh, uh, the tr truck, tank truck failed, and because of the not the explosion load, but because of the flying fragments, some of them fly five, 500 away from the the, uh, the truck itself and hit buildings or hit uh, impacted uh, uh, in the individuals. And uh, the vessels pipes, those are very important. This is again from a real uh, accident uh, in investigation. As you see, vessel can fail. And, uh, or uh, storage tanks, you, you see in LNG facilities a lot. And when they fail due to the blast, then you will have another event, a big fire, and that will cause a domino effect, uh, which will cause significant issues, fatalities, or injuries, uh, and significant damage to the structure. So this is, uh, again, example, pipes and uh, vessels how they respond to uh, the blast. And these are the uh, um, analytical models, computer models, that shows your representation of the vessel rupture or the damage on, the, on, the, uh, on their uh, wall. I think what I will do is I will stop here. Uh, so thank you for listening to me. Otherwise, I think, uh, yeah, I think it's time, right? Yeah, OK. Uh, so thank you very much. 
Um, at this time, I'll allow two questions to the um, tally. Dr. Sari. My questions. Ready? Go on. Hold on. Myron Chin, civil structural engineer. Can you give us an idea of the codes you use in your design work? Okay, this that's a good question. In blast engineering or for oil and gas, we don't use code. There is no code, uh, uh, or the, there is there are guidelines, uh, but there are no codes. So this analysis is uh, you accept, like I mentioned, damages. It is not a conventional analysis or design. You accept plastic response and significant deformations. So it is uh, there are mainly uh, no code that describes that. But uh, for example, a API guidelines. There are API guidelines. Actually, re recently I uh, I, we, I wrote the blast and fire part, part of the API uh, API guideline API to top. Uh, it will be published in, in March. Uh, there are books, some of the books, and there are there are, uh, fabric uh, fire and blast uh, uh, institution uh, industry guideline in UK the, the, or Norsok in Norway. So there are these these are the guidelines that uh, that may be used, but the guidelines will not tell you everything, uh, and it will not be enough. Uh, you know, the experience, engineering judgment is very important. Yes. My old boss, electrical engineer. Um, I work in oil and gas, and all I'm thoroughly petrified. Could you? <laughs> could you? Well, answer? it's a risky business. I think you know that, right? Yes. That's why you are paid better than other engineers. <laughs> <laughs> could you um, tell us if there's anything at all? Once the buildings are built, and we work in a lot of older facilities, are there retroactive things that can be done to these older facilities, or is it only when you start to build new facilities you can do some of this engineering? Yeah, the, actually, that's a very good question. Um, you, there is we call facility siting study, which uh, which you, we go to uh, existing facilities and look at the scenarios, identify the hazard scenarios, explosion, fire, toxic scenarios, and develop mitigation options for that. Uh, then, for example, say we we identify the hazard, and at the same time we tell them that due to this hazard or this scenario. This you will expect this. For example, the, the, your control room will will collapse for this scenario, or you have a maintenance or warehouse that will have high damage, or wall collapse, roof collapse, and etc. And then we we I, we define mitigation option. We say that okay, do this. Uh, re, for example, strengthening the, the your wall this way, uh, uh, or or maybe if it is very uh, high explosion scenarios or fire scenarios, we say maybe move your building to a new location, and this is the best location to do that. In depends on which type of building you want to, do, to use. So there are, uh, uh, you know, you don't need to de de design totally new facility. There are uh, options, and some of them very simple mitigation options, very cheap, very easy. Uh, I mentioned you win window glass. The most of the facilities in the world, uh, I have been uh, almost everywhere, uh, will have issue with the glass uh, not being uh, blast resistant. And uh, to fix it is very simple and very cheap. Uh, and consequence of fixing it, actually, it saves a lot of pe people's life uh, and uh, or injuries, uh, prevent the injuries. What is the fixing process? Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> This consulting part of it, but <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the simple way, uh, if if the if the scenarios uh, the blast load is not that very high, you can use kind of safety film that will that will at least hold the glass. Actually, I didn't show you the video of it. Uh, there for the test, we, I also put the safety glass and do the test, and you will see you can see how it holds the broken pieces flying, prevent flying inside of the building. If the blast load is high, the, we, we, we design blast resistant glass. 
actually, a, for example, uh, for the building that we tested that you see, it is it's glass is the res can resist. It is uh, almost uh, uh, almost uh, three centimeter thick glass. It has five layers, and then uh, it can resist uh, more than one bar plus plus pressure load. So you can replace your existing glass with them uh, if you have bl high blast load. And there are other simple, very simple methods for, uh, to retrofit the glass.